Hi there, here's another video along the same lines as number 47 and also way back at the beginning, numbers 1 and 2 where I look at building your own strength template. So switch over to Excel and this is what we're going to be playing with today. The purpose is to try and create the ability to calculate training load points or some kind of indication of intensity for a workout. Now I've done this myself so I'll show you some of those ideas. Um, the hardest part about this isn't the Excel bit, it's about having a clear idea in your head as to how you actually calculate load or consider load in your strength programs. So we've got a few tasks here that I've put in a little list to the right. First thing is to go to a control panel page and set up some named ranges. Now. Now I'm going to introduce a new concept today which is quite important when you start getting uh, spreadsheets with a lot of uh, sheets and names in there and it can become quite helpful to you in terms of your design. So what we've got is a few categories and a few categories of exercises and some other lists such as the names and the phases of training and so on. So. Um, I'm going to quickly go through and do those, but the concept that I want to introduce is that having a little prefix at the beginning of um, two named ranges that are kind of the same thing. And what I mean by that is I'm going to call this list categories, and I'm going to call this. So the list will be used in a drop-down box because to do it in a drop-down box you can only have one column, whereas the table will be used in a lookup function when we try and apply points to an exercise. This one's a list. Couple more lists here. Now, when we start um, naming the lists of exercises, it's quite important to get this right. So, for our trick to work, the name of this range needs to exactly match what's typed here. If it doesn't, we get a little error in our data validation, which some of you might have got. So I'm going to select this group of exercises, and I'm going to type in, excuse me, list, and then the name of the range, lower body primary lifts. Now I'm going to select the rest of the table, Put the prefix in called table and then lower body primary lifts. Now I'm going to do that for the rest of these tables and um, come back to you in a second just so you don't have to see me do it five times. So I've gone ahead and made a bunch of named ranges and we can see them all in the name manager here. So let's go and apply them to it. Data validation list F3 list of athletes data validation list F3 list of phases data validation list F3 list of schedule. Now before I hit OK I just want to do a little extension to this. If we go to the error alert tab and I uncheck this box that says show error alert when invalid data is entered and click OK, what we'll find is that just like always we've got a list but I could type something else and it would accept it. If I hadn't typed that in for example, like we have at the top here with a list of names, I just typed 
something else in it will not let me. So unticking that box can be quite useful. All right, the next thing we want to do is two categories. So now we've got the ability to choose our exercise group. And now we are in a position to um, show again the use of indirect. So indirect allows you to have a drop down box in the exercise column. That's column F. That is directly linked to the category in column A. So I'll do this all together. Data validation. List equals indirect now you'll note I typed the word list there that is because um, the name of our range is called list lower body primary lifts so I just added it by putting it in quotes I'll show you that in just a second But as we can see, that's worked just fine. Now just to show you what I mean here. If we have two pieces of text and two cells, we can join them together with the ampersand. Now the same thing happens for a named range. So all I did was add the word list to lower body primary lifts and that allowed us to link to the correct data validation range. Now if we were trying to go at the simplest possible level, what we could do is very simply say for every lower body primary lift, let's apply some points. Now on the control panel page in this first table, that's what I've done. I've said 120 points for lower body primary lifts, 90, 175, and 50. A real simple points calculator. And to make that work, it's just a VLOOKUP. What am I looking up? The category. Where am I looking it up? I'm looking it up in a table called table categories and so we want some column 2 and it's exact lookup now we'll get some errors when I drag this down because there are blank cells but we can fix that quite easily so at the lowest level simply by multiplying it by the number of sets I'll put if error in the front We've got a little load calculator going on. And if I do a sum up the top, that'll work out all right. So as I build and add exercises in, my calculations will appear. So that's the simplest level that we could do it at. Now let's say we don't want to do it that way. Let's say we want to use a load calculation for each exercise. And so over on the control panel page, I just made up some random numbers and put them next to each exercise in these tables. So I can look them up and get a, a more specific, if you like, load points. Now to do it from exercise, we use the same concept of the lookup. We want to look up front squat. Where do we want to look it up? We want to look it up in a table called excuse me
And if I hit enter now, we get an error. And the reason for that is I have to use indirect. So if I wrap indirect around this little part, what we'll find is that it'll work. And I'll just select this. Now hit F9, and what we'll see is the details of our table. Drag that out of the way. So we know we've got the right table. If I hit enter, I drag that down. Once again, I can multiply it by sets. Put if error at the front. Double quotes at the end. And copy that down. Right to the bottom. And so, really the, the concept becomes identifying how deep you want this to go. If you wanted to stick with that, that every exercise has a load, and you multiply it by the number of sets, then that's uh, already ready to go. You could make that work with the formulas I've just showed you. But you might decide to get more complicated again. And instead of multiplying it just by a generic number, i.e. by the number of sets in column H, you multiply it by some kind of factor, because in my opinion, you know, a sequence of 15, 15, 12, 12, at the moment just equals 4. But the intensity required to do 4 sets such as this is much harder than 15, 15, 12, 12. So you could go down here and say, OK, well, actually, instead of having that be 4, that's going to be 5. And that's going to be 3. And so on. So just for argument's sake, I'm just going to put some random numbers in here for the purposes of the example. I happen to think that a real middle-of-the-road set rep scheme is something like this one. So I might say that everything below this has got some kind of incremental factor above 4. This one here has obviously uh, only got 3 sets. So. Now, so you can go through and create a little system like this where instead of a, multiplying it by the number of sets, you multiply it by some kind of factor that allows you to input your own opinions as to what a set of 12 or a set of 8 or a set of 10 is worth. And then over here, instead of multiplying it simply by the set, which is currently a H8, we'd do another VLOOKUP. So um, the number would come out probably a little bit more complicated. It might come out such as 343.5 points, etc. But the, the key thing is that no one sees these columns. What you do is you select your program like so. You go to Page Layout and Set Print Area. And then when you go to Print, that's what gets seen. All the workings to the left-hand side are only visible by you, which is why I grade them out.